Ladies and gentlemen, it's here, my first A6 race day shoe. It's the A6 Metaspeed Sky Plus. Let's talk about my first impressions with this shoe. So before we get into the video, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, if you're already subscribed, watching content, thanks so much, love you guys a lot. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and subscribe for all sorts of updates. Without further ado, let's begin. So before I post the specs, uh, just the TLDR as to why this shoe is in my lineup officially or why I'm testing it is as of a professional uh, running assessment doctor uh, recommendation. So just based on my current running anatomy, um, it looks like just based on flexibility, the way my feet form, the way uh, you know I have a little bit of a femoral uh, antiversion in my legs, running in something with a lower stack height or a lower, uh, not lower stack height, I mean a lower drop, lower offset, is pretty much going to be the way to go, or at least that's what it's been theorized to go. It's not to say I didn't run in something like a Vaporfly Next Percent or a Tempo Next Percent, which have like eight millimeter offset and 10 uh, millimeter respectively. But like, as we get into the specs here, you'll see this thing rides low, kind of actually, I think exactly like an Alpha Fly one. So we'll get into it. Specs right up here, as you can see. And if you know the Alpha Fly specs, those are almost exactly the same. But there's going to be a few changes as we kind of get into it. I don't mean to compare it to the Alpha Fly immediately, but yeah, that's kind of what's going on. So when we talk about first impressions, I have maybe maximum about 10 to 11 miles on the shoes as they stand, which is kind of about where I want it to do. I don't want to like do a 5K and say, this is a marathon race day shoe because that's crazy. You never want to do that uh, when it comes to assessing shoes. I needed to put it through a little bit more of a gauntlet to know how I was going to feel about the shoe. And yes, I did run a 5K in it as just the initial test to make sure it was working the way I wanted it to. And then I put in like a seven, eight mile run just to kind of feel it out. And uh, yeah, a lot of lessons learned there. But first, let's just talk about our overall specs as we will be talking about for the first time on this channel. We do have, again, that 39 millimeter heel and 34 millimeter forefoot giving us that five millimeter offset overall in the shoe the shoe in my size about eight and a half weighs about like 7.1 ounces that is approximately 200 grams on average give or take variations in manufacturing and things like that right um other things to note here is that we do have this like nylon mesh upper that in my opinion resembles a lot and pays homage to the nike vaporfly next percent one in terms of this upper looking like pretty much exactly like that shoe just with its um architectural changes based on the geometry of the shoe right but i do like this in terms of like when it comes to rain and like different conditions uh the shoe will be able to navigate those circumstances accordingly so that's just something i liked about the vaporfly next percent one i'm seeing it in the meta speed sky plus we're going to be interested to see if it goes kind of the same way other things to note here is that we do have this ff turbo uh foam running pretty much the entire duration of the shoe and immediate things to note about this shoe as you kind of look at it at first glance is if you just like look at a lot of other racing shoes, um, typically the shoes will have like this high heel and then kind of trim down as you go. Asics obviously knows what they were doing here. They went with like this like thin heel and then the major stack of the foam is like right here and it goes wide in your midfoot area and it also goes pretty high in this midfoot area too. And then we have a bit of a curve or like an archway kind of going up on this shoe. And this is where, you know, the doctors during my run assessment, uh, I, I see where they were going with this, right? Because to establish in, I guess, the average runner's day-to-day uh, -day running, the, to establish highest efficiency in your running you should be trying to aim for a high cadence midfoot type of strike, okay? So what ASICS created here is a shoe that isn't necessarily a beginner's marathon shoe, okay? This shoe, in my particular case, is almost a training piece to get my marathon form into the most efficient peak t uh, shape possible through essentially not forcing me to ride the midfoot, but kind of discouraging this forefoot strike, discouraging a heel strike in a way, because the return, I this is totally intentional, this is not a con, I think the return from forefoot striking in this shoe 
is dull and not nearly as profound as something like the Vaporfly Next Percent, the Alpha Fly, uh, the Adios Pro 3 from Adidas. Like, this shoe right here just does not have that strike compared to if you were to strike the midfoot area of this shoe, and I think that's the point. And also, it's worth noting that I think the plate is also, like, more profound in this particular area of the shoe. I believe it runs the duration of this shoe. I'll have to, like, triple check that. I'll make a comment here below, but, like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here. Um, following pretty much the same principles of the daily race day shoe that exists on the market. Um, and, yeah, basically the point here is that if your form is in really good shape for the marathon, half marathon, I think you're going to have a really good time and a really good ride with this shoe as it stands right now. The thing, again, worth noting is that this doesn't feel like some entry-level marathon shoe where you just like put it on and you just go, and if your heel's striking, it's forgiving or anything like that. I don't really think it is. This is a firm ride shoe. Like, there isn't a whole lot of foam in the heel area or your forefoot area, which kind of gives you that forgiveness. Is the shoe stable? Totally. That's, I think, a strong feature of the shoe if you have that midfoot strike. Like, look how wide this thing is, right? That's like about, you know, ish so wide kind of going in this area. And this almost reminds me of like the Alpha Fly. But again, with the Alpha Fly, you have those air pods which kind of sink both ways. So the stability sort of decreases. Where here, it's just flat right across, you know, no extra moving parts in your. Uh, you know, in your outsole area of the shoe here. So, I think the way the shoe stands is, uh, I'll actually kind of run into this uh, as our next transition point. What do I think when running with the shoe? Like, there is a mental note while I'm running in this thing to increase my uh, steps per minute. There is a, a mental note to ride more midfoot if I want that return in this particular shoe. And, uh, it, for some reason, it also feels like the shoe almost like glides or it like hugs the ground really close. And that's something I've thought about after like watching my assessments in like the Adios Pro 3, my old videos while running in like an Alpha Fly or a Vapor Fly. It's like there's a lot of springiness to my form that otherwise I'm imagining in the shoe is a lot lower just simply because that spring doesn't really happen in the forefoot area of this shoe just because, again, I don't think the strike emphasis is to be in this particular area. It's more to be like here in this like fat stack right there, I guess. On this side, it's right here. On the inside, it's like right there. So you want that emphasis to be striking like you want that strike to be sort of like, you know, right about there, I would say. And um, the, the point there is that the shoe runs low. It glides. And it's incredibly consistent as well. So I'll kind of give you some of my metrics when I was doing my uh, tempo session yesterday, right? I was doing some hill runs and things like that for about seven, eight miles. And like the pace on average at just like, you know, just going at what felt okay, not too easy, but also not too hard. I was running at about 710 pace, like on average. So the shoe is incredibly consistent when you hold yourself back a little bit, but also kind of give it a little bit of juice and then you keep the form where you need it to. So based on just like my experience with the limited time I've had with the shoe right now, like it's going to be incredibly consistent in my longer runs. Would I use it necessarily in like something like a five or 10 K? I think that's to be seen. I don't know if it's a necessarily speedy shoe compared to other shoes on the market. I would say if you had like a budget of like $500 and you can only afford like the $200, $250 race shoe and then like a daily trainer, then yeah, this shoe is like great. It'll be perfect if it's your only race day shoe in your, um, I guess, in your lineup. But at that point, like, you know, I would think that there's a possibility you can maybe like throw in... I don't know, some other race day shoe. I'm trying to think of like some of the other um, ones that you can mesh in with this that are like within price points. Well, if we were working with a $500 budget, not really another like, you know, I wouldn't throw like an Adios Pro 3 as like your, um, your longer distance shoe in that case, or your shorter distance for that. But, you know, uh, point here is if we focus on this shoe again, is it feels like it rides incredibly low. It feels extremely efficient and... Uh, efficient and I would say consistent in the longer run style workout 
And I think the shoe is reliable so far in that in those distance workouts. So if I had to try this out for like the half marathon, which my next half marathon looks like it's going to be, well, we do have a 10 mile race on, uh, that's the Soldier Field 10 miler. And then I have the Chicago 13.1 in June. This gives me like a lot of time, about a month to really get comfortable in the shoe and decide, hey, am I running a half marathon in this? Am I running 10 miles in this? I guess like we'll maybe reserve this shoe for those particular races and then something shorter like you know uh corporate challenge coming up next thursday or like the lincoln park zoo 10k i might reserve those for like my adios pro 3 or i throw in the meta speed sky plus just to kind of feel them out right so that's kind of where i'm thinking with the shoe is like okay when it comes to marathon and half marathon work this is probably that shoe but it's still too soon to be determined based on first impressions i need like at least 50 to 100 miles to like completely be sure because you don't just like pick up one of these shoes and say this is the race day shoe after one run like that's it like i want to make sure right because i'm changing brands again here in terms of what i want to use for a marathon shoe because i just went from like nikes i went from nike to hoka i went from hoka to adidas and now i went from adidas to trying out asics in this particular case and it's not like the, this isn't the first time i've had an asics i do actually still have my magic speed sky somewhere downstairs um, I might have to bring that out and uh, try to see if I can get it to be this uh, training partner shoe. But again, I want to be totally sure that the engineering of the shoe for me is right for a half marathon and marathon situation. But as the shoe stands right now, the ride is incredible if your form is exactly where you need it, which is that high cadence, mid strike style running. That's where I think I'm going to leave it for now. If you guys have any questions or agree or disagree with the assessment or have any other thoughts regarding like the Metaspeed Sky Plus that I should talk about later, let me know in the comments below. But for now, I'm going to leave it right here. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.